Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine Part 19. Some small jobs and a bit of painting. The rebuild of this Tangy Engine is almost complete. The first job to do is to fit the crosshead. I've lubricated the guide, in fact I'll do it again to make sure I haven't missed any. And here I'm fitting the crosshead into the guide and it's a perfect fit. It slides very well back and forth. I'm pleased with this because I redesigned the crosshead. Normally crossheads are flat on both sides, but this one isn't, it's only flat on the front. I left the back of the crosshead at the same diameter as the trunk guide. This means that the crosshead is a really good fit in the guide and it doesn't move about at all. Well, apart from backwards and forwards, obviously. Once again, I'm temporarily fitting a 4BA bolt to hold the connecting rod into the crosshead. This bolt will be replaced very shortly by a pin. More about that later. Well, the good news is everything's feeling as it should. The crankshaft rotates very smoothly and nothing's binding at all. One of the jobs I need to do is very important. The piston rod is only a temporary one because I wasn't sure how long it was going to be. And in this clip I'm temporarily fitting the piston. And with the piston in the correct position at this end, I want to make sure that when I rotate the crankshaft, it doesn't bind at the other end. And the good news is it doesn't, but have a close look at the piston rod and you will see that some of the thread is exposed, because it's too long. Now I need to take some measurements to make sure that I don't make the next piston rod also too long. This is the gland nut that fits in the end of the cylinder and I mustn't forget to fit this. I found in my box of long 4BA bolts something that would be okay, I thought, to make the cross pin. But unfortunately, when I used the needle file to mark the position where the thread's going to be, I realised that what I thought was a steel bolt is really made from brass. And it's so well plated it had me fooled for a moment. But anyway, I will go through the process of making a pin, because this is something that you have to do quite a lot if you mess about with steam engines. I've cut the bolt to length, and I'm using the tailstock chuck to accurately position the bolt in the main chuck. And after a bit of lubricating oil, it's time to cut the thread. When I'm threading brass parts, I don't normally use any lubrication, but for the purposes of this exercise, I am doing. I'm showing you how to make a pin. And you have to imagine that this pin is made from a piece of steel, not brass. As usual, I'm using my homemade tailstock die holder assembly, which takes preloaded dies in commercial die holders. I prefer to use this system rather than use a standard tailstock die holder, where every time I need to use it, I have to set up a die in the holder. I produced a video showing how I made this special tailstock die holder. And thinking about it, I do need to make another one for the larger types of die holder. So at some future time, I'll probably make a video about doing just that. Then I will have a die holder adapter to fit every die that I own. The thread's being cut. Time to try it in position. Here's the connecting rod going into the crosshead. All I have to do now is screw in the bolt. Sorry, I mean the plain shank pin. I screwed in the slot-headed bolt about halfway, and then I realised how much I didn't like it. I think when I make the proper pin, I'll use a piece of steel hexagon. That will look much more steam engine-like. In this video, at this stage, I would normally be making a proper crosshead pin and a new piston rod. But unfortunately, it's Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon, and I don't have any pieces of metal the right size until Monday morning, when I will go up to Blackgates Engineering and hopefully buy some. But I'll carry on regardless. I need to re-thread the hole in the flywheel, because once again it's metric and I want it to be imperial. In this hole I'm going to fit a 4BA grub screw. This will look better than a large ungainly cheese head bolt, I think. A special note to beginners, do not break off the tap when you're doing a job like this. And thankfully I didn't do it either. In this clip I'm using an old paintbrush to remove every particle of metal generated by threading the hole. And now for a second coat, it's painting time. And the music that I'm playing is something I composed with a friend of mine called Colin Green. We were making an album called C.W. Green's Crazy Country Band Album. But unfortunately, Colin died before we could finish this track. The song was about a girlfriend that Colin used to have, and the story in the lyric, which is obviously not present, is all about the girlfriend eating all of the local neighbourhood pets. Colin's sense of humour was far worse than mine. I was very sad when he died and I miss him dearly, so rest in peace my friend, 
And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. I almost forgot, at the end of this video is an extended sequence of the paint actually drying for those really strange viewers who seem to like to watch paint drying. It takes all kinds to populate a lunatic asylum. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.